We are on the second to last question in this section, which means it's supposed to be really hard. But the SAT can make things hard in lots of different ways. The way they're making it hard here is just trying to scare you into quitting. This question is so easy. It's just about reading the story. You barely need to understand it at all. So don't get intimidated. Don't quit too early. What they want here is what does this point mean? Right? And they're telling us it's x, y, right? 1 is the x, 83 is the y. But if we go back earlier in the story, they tell us what the x and the y stand for. x is the number of days and y is the price in dollars. So why don't we just write that, right? Why don't we put that down, that it's one day and $83, right? So instead of writing it just as an x, y, let's add the units in, because look at my answer choices, right? They're adding in the units as well. So choice A, the company's estimated stock price increased $83 every day after the new product launch. So I like that it says $83, I don't see a one anywhere, that's kind of weird, but let's move on. Maybe one can kind of disappear sometimes because of the way it, we, we speak about it, but let's keep going. B, the company's estimated stock price increased $1 every 83 days after the new product launch. No, 83 isn't the days, one isn't the dollars, right? This is flipping the units. So this is really what this question is about, just units. Um, C, one day after the new product launched, the company's estimated stock price is $83. So, okay, $83 I like, one day I like, hmm, so that seems better than A. Let's look at D though. 83 days after the new product launched, the company's estimated stock price is $1. This makes the same mistake as B. It's flipping the units. So look, even if you're still confused, just by reading that it says X is the number of days, you have a 50-50 shot at the second hardest question in this module. This is a good place to be. Now, if you were placing a bet on the right answer, C would be a good bet because it has both of the things that we want. The, the number of days is one, the number of dollars is 83. So yeah, that is the answer. If you want me to give you a little bit more context about why this is the answer, it's really just that that's what this equation represents, is that X is the number of days, 83 is the number of dollars. Um, when we talk about it increasing by $83, this is code for slope. Now that doesn't really apply because this is a quadratic equation. Slope is only for lines. So this just doesn't really fit with this particular type of equation. If it was a y equals mx plus b, maybe then this is a more tempting answer, but you slope does not exist for anything other than lines, okay? So we have an x squared, you should know, okay, we're out of slope. That doesn't, don't associate that word with that. It's only for lines. So that forces us to pick C. But the main takeaway for a question like this is that just because something is hard in the SAT's eyes doesn't mean it's always hard in the exact same way. Some hard questions you're gonna hate because they involve lots of algebra. Those are okay to skip. Those are okay to give up on. But this is no math, right? This is just reading. This is reading and associating a number with a unit and then kind of matching up with the choices. So this is something everyone should be able to get. You just can't quit. So hopefully I've kind of given you that confidence to try on stuff like this. Things that look really, really mathy are not always really, really mathematical to solve. They're sometimes just reading questions.